Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself and what you do for a job? Okay. Hi, my name's Inga. I am a consultant with a company called Jacobs, a global firm based in the United States. And I specialize as a project manager in airports. Okay, that sounds really confusing. So we'll come back to that in a little bit to understand what that actually means. Uh, first of all, let's start way back when you're in year nine, because this video is for year nine students. When you were in year nine, can you remember what you wanted to be when you grew up? Sure. Firstly, I was in year nine in Malaysia in an American school, just to make it a bit more interesting. And I wanted to be an Air Force pilot. Okay, so how did that uh, decide what subjects you did uh, in year 11 and 12? And where were you when you did year 11 and 12? So year 11 and 12, I was in Melbourne at Luther College out in the east and I did lots of maths, science, had to do English unfortunately, but it's important. Um, and I also enjoyed doing legal studies and business. Okay, so was there a reason you chose those subjects or were they just ones that you enjoyed at school? Oh. Most, mostly I enjoyed. Okay, so they had nothing to do with you thinking about being a pilot? Not specifically, no. Okay. And what happened? Uh, oh, sorry, let me change that. Yes, the, the maths and science was important to being a pilot. Okay. Um, so thinking ahead, uh, you finished year 12. What happened then? Uh, in terms of career path or extra study? So while I was completing year 12, I applied to the Air Force to be a pilot. Unfortunately, my eyesight is not and was not perfect. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't perfect. So I couldn't be a pilot with the Air Force, which was disappointing. Uh, I did look at Qantas. They had a cadet scheme going at that time, but you couldn't join that until you were at least 19. And I was only turning 18 at the end of year 12. So out of that, I decided it would be a good idea to show that I can apply for university. I did. And um, I started a double degree, so two bachelors in civil engineering and business administration at RMIT in Melbourne. Okay. And what happened during your study? So how long was that uh, course for? And that was five years. Okay, five years. And what happened during that? So did you still want to go down the pilot path or did things change? I guess pilot sort of faded into the background and I was just stuck in, stuck into and enjoying doing the degree. Though five years is a very long time of doing intense study and it started getting rather hard by the end of the five years, but it was well worth finishing. Okay. And then what pathway did you decide on then? So I decided to take a holiday for the first, well, for after immediately finishing university, I didn't want to go straight into work. Uh, I was more interested in the project management side of engineering rather than the technical engineering. I did actually apply to the housing development board in Singapore uh, to work for them, uh, but decided not to do that in the end. I was offered the job. Um, Travelled a little bit, uh, just enjoyed taking a bit of a break after five, well, five years plus all of schooling, of study. Uh, and then actually, interestingly, saw advertised that the Air Force was looking for civil engineers uh, to be facilities officers and applied for that because I knew the Air Force. My father was in the Air Force and we lived and moved around the Air Force all my childhood. So I applied for that and uh, ended up as a facilities officer in the Royal Australian Air Force. And what is a facilities officer? So facilities officer, 
what was the way we used to describe it? We were responsible for everything on an airbase that didn't move. So all the buildings, the power, the water, the sewerage, the runways, the roads, uh, an airbase is really a little town in itself. So I was responsible for everything. Uh, we were building, uh, my first posting was to Rough Base Tyndall up in the Northern Territory. Uh, we were building more of that base. So I got involved in building new, but I also had to look after what was existing, uh, maintain it, improve it, organize contractors, organize a team, all those types of fun things. Okay, so within your career in the Air Force, uh, if you want to share how long that was for, where did you get to go and what sort of things did you get to do? So I ended up spending seven years altogether in the Air Force. It started with officer, junior officer training at Point Cook, uh, which is in Melbourne. That was actually the original Air Force base in Australia. Uh, after that, got posted to Tyndall, as I mentioned before, where uh, that was the Air Force's newest base. And I was also responsible for the Delamere Air Weapons Range, which was really interesting and flew in between them and got to do all types of cool stuff. Uh, after almost three years there, we moved to Canberra, where I went to headquarters in Canberra and worked on big projects organizing big projects and uh, as part of that not a lot of air force but i did projects for the army in victoria uh, doing all types of reserve depots in like bendigo ballarat and other towns around victoria i did a new uh, office facility for them down in fort queenscliff and uh, also managed a, the Navy air base redevelopment in Nowra and New South Wales. So quite a bit of traveling around, uh, managing interesting, very interesting works. For example, at the Navy base, uh, we had to do simulators for their helicopters landing on the back of ships. So designing uh, uh, on tops of hills, uh, these structures that are like the back of the ship and they can practice landing on those and more for the crew on the ship to practice having a helicopter coming in and also doing a great big pool indoors with simulated waves and wind and storms and lightning for helicopter emergency training. If your helicopter falls in the water, how to get out in horrible conditions. So lots of interesting work. That's Canberra. Then I got uh, to go to Bosnia. I spent over six months as part of the NATO Stabilisation Force in Bosnia, where I was a civil military cooperation project officer. Got to manage all types of interesting projects, rebuilding schools in the country, uh, power lines, water, ski lifts, uh, all types of things, rebuilding, helping the country get going again, and working with lots of other people from different countries, which was really interesting. And then came back to Australia, went to Rough Base Richmond in Sydney, started getting bored and I moved on. Okay, so from moving on, uh, what are the types of things that you've gotten to do? So uh, what title did you take on in the private sector? Who are you working for? What are some of the highlights of where you've gotten to go and mm -hmm. what projects you've gotten to work on? Yep, so I, from leaving the Air Force, I became a, that's when I started my consulting career. Uh, firstly, lived in Canberra, working from there, helping with, uh, <laughs> because of my defence background, I worked on um, property work in Sydney. I did a lot of uh, rough base maintenance type jobs, manage them. So you go out, work out what needs, to be done, uh, tender it, gauge a company, do the contract, manage the works, go on site. So I traveled all over Australia uh, for a number of years there managing works. Um, as a, I was a senior engineer then. Uh, then I was looking for something, again, more interesting and different to do and wanted to get some more international experience. So moved to, I applied to an engineering company called Halcro in the UK. And they said, we've got lots of work in Dubai in the Middle East. How would you like to go there? And I said, 
let me think about it. And I read about it and looked at it and thought, let's give this a try. So we moved to the Middle East pretty quickly um, and spent seven years living in Dubai and managed all types of amazing big airport projects. Uh, the first thing I got put onto was there was an island in the Gulf where I managed a whole program of works to build a new airport, to build a resort, to build a marina, to build a cultural village, roads, all the utilities to make that happen. Uh, unfortunately, with the financial crisis, that then didn't happen. We designed it all and had it all ready to go, but it didn't happen. But I uh, did the second runway for Abu Dhabi Airport, did lots of military bases around the area. I got to go to Syria and help rebuilding the uh, base in Damascus, sorry, the airport in Damascus. Went to uh, the UK and helped out the team there for a while, part of the same company I was working for, works on Gatwick Airport. Um, so I got to do a bit of travel, meet lots of different interesting people different um, cultures to live in. Then I got asked to, if I would be interested in moving to Melbourne, because Melbourne was looking at a new runway for their airport. And I said, sure, that's actually my hometown. It's been 17 years since I've been in Melbourne and uh, helped my company win that job. We got it. And in 2014, we moved back to Melbourne and Guess what changed with the job there was more than being an engineer, I became a program manager. So man more than doing the engineering, I was managing the whole works, so managing the approvals, managing the property acquisition, managing the, um, the design for the work, planning for the work, uh, dealing with the airlines and air services and uh, CASA and government all in trying to make this all happen, which hasn't happened yet. Now that I finished with that a year ago and since that time I've done work um, helping manage a terminal expansion at Hobart Airport. So I was traveling down to Hobart regularly and where else? So unfortunately that stopped because of the pandemic. Uh, I've now been managing big taxiway works at Melbourne Airport and also supporting remotely uh, work in Saudi Arabia on a new airport there and in the UAE to very quickly upgrade an airport. So all types of things, lots of travel. My career has moved from being more of an in, uh, I guess with the Air Force, it was more of a management then when I moved to consulting, it became more of a pure engineer mixed with project management. And now I manage, mostly manage large projects or programs of work, which is lots of projects together, making a big program outcome. Okay, so as a civil engineer, initially with your qualifications, you've now broadened that to big projects. And is that just because of all the opportunities that you've had um, with the different projects? Yes. Yeah, I, I always like the managing the projects and being involved in the decision making and picking rather than um, just the pure technical design part. The technical design part is really interesting as well, uh, coming up with solutions for things and such. But um, I... Yeah, just my natural interest led more to the wider management part of it. Okay, so if somebody, if one of the students is interested in civil engineering, when they see that as an engineering type of, you know, because there's so many different areas in engineering, if they were interested in civil engineering, can you explain in just a few words what that actually means? Because your job has changed so much, but just yes. what is civil engineering? What is it? Yep. Civil engineering is, how do you easily describe it? It's all types of infrastructure that you see around. So civil engineering generally is um, horizontal engineering uh, rather than vertical. So buildings, vertical, they go up out of the ground um, and civil engineering is your engineering disciplines that are in the ground or um, flat. 
So roads, railways, bridges, uh, water, sir, not so much the water, that, that tends to be more the mechanical, but u utilities, provisions for it. Um, airports have uh, obviously all the runways and the earthworks and that type of thing that happen in, with them. So that's why where my civil engineering came in useful for there. But, um, you can go a bit more down the environmental side. Um, there's lots of ways. Civil, civil engineering is a very general area and you can end up specialising in lots of different ways. I ended up specialising in pavements and airports uh, just because that's where my interest was and that's what I ended up doing. Did you have to do any more qualifications after your initial university degree to help you along the way with your career? Yep, sure. So when I had left the Air Force and started uh, working as a consultant, as a senior engineer, and I was doing a lot, I very quickly ended up doing lots of pavement work on airfields. I decided that it would be helpful if I did a, a master's course. So I did a master's degree in technology and pavements. I did that by correspondence over about three years. So doing a subject every semester in my spare time, go sit an exam and uh, learnt a lot about pavements and earthworks. And so that helped because that, by that time I knew a bit more about where my interest or where my focus was. So I chose some extra training to help with that. that that's, that's the one postgraduate degree I've done. Along the way, there's been lots of short courses or week long courses in all types of things, uh, lots of project management, program management type courses. Uh, the company I work for has done a whole pile of, um, sorry, they had their own university, they called it, but uh, uh, it was a whole course framework about program management. Remember I said program is lots of projects, making up a program of works. So the company, they, they were the world's biggest program manager. So. Uh, so you understand program management is taking on massive developments like um, my company did the London Olympics in 2012. They managed that whole program of works. Uh, they, it might be for a big airport in the US where it's changing. All six runways are changing and it's, so it's lots and lots of projects or Panama Canal uh, we managed uh, the duplication and enlarging the uh, Panama Canal. So the world's biggest, most complex projects run as programs. Okay. Uh, is there a need for civil engineers nowadays in Australia? Very much so. Engineers in general, there's not enough of them. And uh, yeah, we really need them in Australia. They're needed around the world. It gives you opportunities. Uh, whether you like staying where you are, or if you like moving around, uh, it's a very transferable skill. And there's never seems to be enough engineers around. Uh, there's more and more challenges all the time as we move along on. Um, as you just, just look at uh, Victoria at the moment, the number of uh, road projects that have been happening in the last years, the number of railway projects that are happening, the tunnelling. Tunnelling is part of civil engineering. Uh, the, uh, the new metro train tunnel, the Westgate um, tunnel that's happening. And yeah, the, the cities keep getting bigger and we keep doing more work and we need more engineers. Okay, well, thanks so much for your time. Bye. Pleasure. <laughs> Bye.